Ja, uh, salam alaikum, I'm gonna start. <clears throat> Hi, um, my name is Miwa Asadi. I am a Shizuoka Muslim Association Head Office Manager. Uh, SMA has been uh, established since 2010 and I have been uh, Vice President of the SMA for the last uh, five years and this year, alhamdulillah, I, I became the manager because I wanted to take care of some administrative issues for the organization and because my language is native language, it's Japanese and then I also speak English so I wanted to connect the Japanese society as well as the oral community <coughs> and excuse me my uh, voice today, a little bit dry uh, Today I was planning to speak like one hour, but since we are a little bit run out of time, so I'm gonna make it short. And in this lecture, I like to uh, hear actually your opinions more than my talk. I'm just gonna explain my experience and my, my, my perspectives, and if you can just throw your opinions, that'll be great, and then it creates a little more like a discussion here. And my first introduction, how did I become Muslim? Maybe that's something that you might be wondering about me. I became Muslim about 16 years ago. I was studying in the United States, in Oregon State. I went to the uh, graduate school at the Portland State University. But before I entered this university, I was studying in a very uh, small town of Oregon. It's called Coe Valley. And I met many Muslim, uh, sorry, many international students coming from all over the world. And that was my first time to encounter the actual Muslims. And they are mostly from like Middle Eastern countries, but uh, they were my friend, they are friends of mine. And I saw them talking about uh, Allah, God, and religions, and talking about the prayers and stuff. And at that time, I was so away from the idea of the religion. I actually never thought I wanted to become uh, a person who has a faith. But somehow, Allah led me to this sister, Muslim sister from uh, Egypt. She was uh, Egyptian origin, but she was American. Allah made me meet her and interact with her. And her way of living was somehow very impressive to me. And I wanted to live like her. I wanted to have a living principle like hers. So I started asking her questions, how, like, you know, you learn all these things, how did your parents do these things? And she was wearing hijab, so I asked her, why do you have to wear this? And all those questions, the way how she answered to my question was just wonderful. Never forced me, never uh, questioned my way of living. And uh, I was just uh, naturally wanted to discover it myself. So I get on a computer, start doing the research online. And alhamdulillah, there were so many good articles written about Islam. So I studied and I learned and I throw a question to her directly. And somehow I wanted to become Muslim without any question because by knowing the world of Islam, like I cannot go back to the previous me, you know, <laughs> after having the knowledge of Islam, the correct knowledge, I didn't want to go back to the way how I lived before. So after maybe about six months after I met her and studied Islam, um, I told her I want to become Muslim. Then I was uh, thinking how I'm going to deal with my family and how do I explain this to my family back home in Japan. But I just thought, Okay, this is my decision. I'm just making a choice of my life that I want to become a better person, better human being. So I'm not doing anything bad to like betray my parents. So I just decided to do it myself and maybe I'll talk to my parents later, which actually I did. So I asked uh, the, my friend, her name is May Muhammad. And then I as she arranged some, uh, the witnesses for me and I took shahada in front of her. And alhamdulillah, that was really a great uh, moment and I really owe her a lot for who I am today. So, and then after I became Muslim, the life really changed. I was struggling with my life before I became Muslim. But after I became Muslim, I was blessed with friends, the community, and more learning opportunity and more like a, uh, very um, 
positive thinking. Whatever comes to me, whatever comes to my life is something that's uh, from Allah, so I have to accept it. So no more uh, useless struggling. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, and then um, long time, make the long time, uh, long story short, I became Muslim and a year later I met uh, my husband in Portland, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, and uh, we uh, get married. And then afterwards, we decided to um, move back to Morocco for a while. And then after a while, we decided to come to uh, Japan about 10 years ago. This year's actually, it's been 10 years after we came back to Japan. So then my journey started again in, in this country again as a Japanese Muslim living in Japan. And at the beginning, I was struggling how I continue my life as a Muslim here. Uh, no halal products and how about the kids education, kids meals at school, all those anxiety I had in my mind, I had in my mind. But alhamdulillah we just started our life. But as we go, as we went year by year, just things get uh, easier and easier. We found a way to how to like uh, provide us halal meat and uh, how to connect with the community and that's what I like to share with you for my last 10 years experience. Yeah, 10 years ago, Shizuoka. First thing we did was to contact uh, Shizuoka City, uh, my international uh, association that's owned by the Shizuoka, operated by Shizuoka City. I contacted them. Is there any Muslim organization here in Shizuoka or anyone that we can contact or any place that, the, like a masala, we can pray? But they had no information, no uh, organization. But there's one email or, of the one person uh, that we might be able to contact and ask about it. So my husband called the person, a uh, uh, brother, and he said, is there any place that we can pray the fr Friday prayer? And then he told the, my husband that the, oh, there's an address here that you can come on a Friday. So we both went there. And that was a very um, old apartment and that's just an apartment, really, uh, for the, um, you know, like my old apartment that's ready for that, uh, prepared for the ryugakuse. And when he knocked the door, he was shocked to see us coming to his apartment. He told him that we came here for the Friday prayer, but we were not, we were not able to pray that day because he was not expecting us to come over. So that was 10 years ago, Shizuoka. But alhamdulillah, today, um, my husband and I and other great uh, uh, volunteers of the uh, uh, Shizuoka Muslim Association here, we gathered at 2010, May. Why don't we establish this uh, Muslim Association for us? Because we had some Muslim relations here in Shizuoka, but they were uh, gathering for, uh, you know, the like Indonesian group and the Bangladesh group or maybe other ethnic group, like uh, no, other groups. And we were not united. We are even praying different prayers on the Eid day. So why don't we just make one for everybody? And that's the beginning. And alhamdulillah today, we share the Eid and we share the Friday prayers and we share some family you know, events like a picnic and a barbecue. And gradually, really, like we start having all the mixed ethnic groups. Alhamdulillah, it's a really wonderful feeling. And then we have a musalla that we started renting three years ago. So, to, yeah, this year, May, it was a three, uh, three years anniversary. So, in the meantime, children are growing up. When we came to Japan, we only had one child, a baby boy, but now, alhamdulillah, we have four children, three of them going to the Shogakko. So now we are facing different issues than uh, what we had 10 years ago. 10 years ago, we were just looking for the like, place to pray. But now we face how to deal with the Japanese school system. That's like my, my family's uh, most topic to discuss at this moment. School meals, the prayers, hijab, girls' uh, clothing, and the fasting, my basic practicing of these uh, Muslim kids at school. This is from the Undokai, so we are eating obento. But I understand most of the Muslim children in Japan, they take their bentos 
from home instead of eating kyushoku. So, uh, and I know that each family has a different style of uh, dealing with the kyushoku. I think that's fine. But what I realized from communicating with the school teachers, the best tool is how uh, best tool is how to communicate with them, how to introduce Islam to them when they have no idea about what the Islam is, what Muslims are, who are who we are. And then if we just say, "Can I pray? Uh, can I? Uh, can you make the room for my kids? Uh, prayer room. This is a must. We have to do it, and you have to change your kyushoku for us because it's important for us." You know, it's like if you force your way in the ma strong manner, they feel like, oh, wait, 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 you know. So I think the Japanese are very um, understanding people about religion. They do not have a strong op uh, opposition to bring that um, religious practice to school. But, you know, this is really uh, different from school to school because the teacher's idea, especially the school principal's idea, has a strong effect on uh, the practicing of that uh, school. So, we, even in Shizuoka, my kids' school has very open-minded and uh, flexible idea about our kids uh, doing fasting and prayer and stuff. But other school, and, uh, uh, they are just like, uh, no, I'm sorry, no, but so sometimes uh, uh, no change of, uh, no style of the taisogi, no different style of taisogi, you have to wear certain clothes and stuff. So, I feel very frustrated by hearing that because it's the same public school and from the same city and different, uh, you know, conduct because of the different, uh, the principle. So this is something that actually the Shizuoka city, like a communicate, uh, Kyoe Kuin Kai, should know uh, and they should know how to, you know, uh, deal with and treat the Muslim children about these issues. So inshallah, that's something we SMA like to work together to talk to them and uh, deliver the information correctly and what they need to, what the, those Kyoikui uh, guys <coughs> should uh, uh, talk to the teachers and principals at school how to deal with the Muslim children properly. Mm. But what we can do as an individual family or you as a student is really you have a power of influence to the person you actually contact directly, you know. That's something to the, I will talk about it one slide later. But I, as my uh, example, um, I'm a mother, but at the same time I like to uh, be a little bit proactive to get out of my uh, uh, community. I went to the Kakegawa city this year. <coughs> Uh, there's a high school class, uh, they study the uh, world history and the geography. There are about 70 students here. The teacher, Shakai Kano Sensei, contacted me to my a, a homepage. They, she, he, he asked me to talk about Islam, you know, to deliver the correct information about Islam to the students. So I was happy going there to have like a 90 minutes talk in front of them, introducing, like, uh, introducing the world of Islam. And I talked about the hijab and the prayer and those like uh, uh, what we're teaching about the uh, terrorism. And Alhamdulillah, their idea before the class about Islam was completely like uh, Islam is scary. They have something to do with the terrorism. I don't quite understand these people. They are like quite foreigners from us. But after the class, after this class, they wrote the uh, their. Uh, what they thought about uh, about Islam after my lecture, kansou mo kakemashita. Subarashi, honto ni alhamdulillah. I don't know the power of the education, power of the education is so strong. They are saying that now they know the Muslims are the people of the peace. The teaching of Islam is all about the peace and the endurance and also the um, uh, forgiveness. I, because I told them about. Uh, the, especially the fasting, why we fast, you know, and that we, you know, we all know that. And, but they have no idea about it. So I went through the very short, uh, uh, in the short time, I quickly went through the five pillars of Islam and other the topics about the hijab and stuff. 
So at least these 70 students now know about what's the real teaching of Islam. And what's amazing was when I did it, uh, after I did it, actually I did the other teaching in the Shogakko in uh, December, previous, uh, last year December. Next day, that uh, incident in the Paris, the attack in uh, Paris, the bombing happened. So that the, the Shogakse, 120 Shogakse in that school already learned about Islam, that we completely uh, deny the terrorism n n whatsoever, no murdering whatsoever. So those 120 students, Shogakse, will understand the action of ISIS has nothing to do with the teaching of Islam. So when they grow up, uh, when they encounter the Muslims in the future, at high school, or at Daigaku, or in, sh in uh, Shakaijin, Nodaki, I hope they will have a good uh, starting point to communicate with us. And when they become a teacher, <laughs> they will have a good understanding to teach the next generation. So I think that talking to the, especially, especially the young generation, will have great effect even in the future and to be a good friend of our uh, next generations. And uh, this is actually what can you do as an individual when you go back to your community. You know, you have, mashallah, uh, good intelligence, good friends, and good uh, organization around you. So please think about the power of your influences. Your family sports, of course, but you know, at school, shogakko, PTA, you know, please go out, you know, uh, uh, whenever you can, whenever you have a chance, please go out and just be present over there, you know, and have a chat with the mothers around. That's dawah, that's great influence, because mothers around me, I'm sure they will think about me where he tell that, oh, she's just a call through, <laughs> strange, you know, if I don't talk anything, you have to be quiet, they're just gonna think whatever wanna think about me. But if I start talking and just, just you know, do the little mother chat, oh, my kids do this, and it just gives me a hard time. Oh, they know oh, this person has the same issue like as a mother, and we became friends. And we go out and cleaning project. Yes, I do cleaning, and you do this. That's how you create the bonds and the uh, you know, understanding. And uh, that's, I have been create, doing that for the last five years, and I feel great that they have no prejudice about Islam. At least they know me, so they're not gonna you know, think I'm a terrorist or I'm an uh, oppressed person, you know? They. <laughs> so they know me and my husband both. <laughs> so something like that. And you as a, a father and a, you know, a student or a teacher and who interact with the Japanese, uh, people. Um, you know, it might be a little bit shy to talk about Islam, but Alhamdulillah, these days we have a great brochures written in Japanese like this. This is, uh, it's called the Islamagaku. I know some of you already have these brochures. But these are the brochures we can, we Muslim can use to communicate with the Japanese, in, written in Japanese. But because it's sometimes difficult to talk about the religion and Islam in Japanese language, but maybe you just can give it to your friend or mother when you have a good chance to do that. Sorry, my phone. So, I often use these things when I have a chance. Yeah, and Alhamdulillah, um, I work as a, a, a company that I established three years ago. It's called iSolutions. This company basically uh, delivers the uh, information of uh, Islam to Japanese businesses who wants to welcome the uh, Muslim customers, who wants to provide the halal, uh, Muslim friendly like a meal such restaurants. I know that's a uh, business oriented people, but that might be the first you know entrance for them to tell them about Islam. Because I always tell them, if you want to do these kind of things, you have to learn and have good uh, knowledge about Islam. So you will have a good communication with your customers and, and serve the correct uh, services and uh, products. <laughs> Through that, I am open the door for the business people first, but nowadays I receive the contacts from the high schools and Shorakse because of that. So I am often being exposed to the newspaper and the media 
I feel sh I felt very shy at the beginning by doing that. But at the same time, I'm being Japanese, being able to speak uh, Japanese in native language, and then uh, become a Muslim. I thought that's my mission to keep talking about it, keep delivering the information to the uh, Japanese people. Because Japanese has a right to learn about Islam correctly. They just don't know. They are not uh, exposed to the information correctly. So, brothers and sisters, we are here together uh, for three days. We learn a lot of uh, information knowledge. It's time for you to give it back to your community. And I'm sure you will do the great job. And the next year, I don't know where you're going to be gathering, but please, uh, you know, succeed this good spirit of uh, learning and giving out your uh, feedback to the others and share with others. And today, um, my dis uh, my speech is going to finish here, and I like to have a little bit of uh, opinions, I like to hear opinions and discussions for how long? Do I, do I, Ten minutes. Do I have time? Ten minutes. Okay. Okay, now the question to your opinion. Anyone's opinion, please. I'm really sorry, I introduced all the speakers except uh, my wife, so I'd like to introduce them one more time. Uh, mashallah, this conference uh, without her, it wouldn't happen. You know, the hotels uh, dealing with the food, dealing with the renting the conference room. So, really, let's give her a big round of applause.